Brakes work. Electromechanica is an EV manufacturer based out of Vancouver, British Columbia. But before I take you behind the scenes in their facility, I'm going out for a test drive in the Solo. Uh, I'm inside the Solo, my first test drive ever in uh, something so small, and it's electric. That's interesting, it's actually down isn't down. Down is up. Down is up, up is down. Well, all right, I'm just happy the Solo has heated seats. So there's no shifter or anything. It's just essentially a knob. The pedals are so small. Honestly, I think go-kart pedals are bigger. It does have Bluetooth capabilities. So how do you know your Solo EV is on? There's a little ticking noise behind you. This is like a little spaceship. Definitely off the bat, you need, uh, you need to be well aware of what's around you. I mean, my daily driver is a Lexus. So four doors, four windows. I mean, uh, there is no rear view window here. So when I'm stopping, I don't feel any ABS. It's the perfect commuter car for those busy cities with tight streets. Probably be way easier to park as well. You get a lot of looks from people. The dash is pretty cool too. Everything's digital and it's big. Man, that's so cool. Isn't that cool? I don't think I've stopped smiling. <laughs> That's awesome, but no, B no ABS? No, the, um, the car only weighs 1,600 pounds, uh, okay. so there's no requirement for ABS in many jurisdictions that actually classifies as a motorcycle. Huh. So, um, yeah, ABS, the car, because it's so light, it stops way quicker than most conventional cars anyway, so. Okay, so take me for a quick walk yeah. around. Let's start at the front. Okay. Uh, right off the bat, two wheels, yeah. only one in the rear. Correct. I'm um, guessing electric helps to save on, on range, yeah. lighter weight. Yes, exactly. So you have less rolling resistance, uh, less weight. Being a single seat in the back, we don't really need two wheels to support a single occupant. Yeah. The other is that the shape of the car is like a teardrop. So um, that gives uh, a zero blind spot for one, and it also makes the car a little bit more aerodynamic, giving it more range as well. So. Okay, the tires on the front, yes. uh, different than the rear. Yes, uh, a little bit narrower on the front, um, again, to. Uh, to minimize the rolling resistance or drag on the car to get a good range. We've got almost a hundred mile range in the car, so uh, for a commuter that should cover everybody. So 160k roughly range. Yeah. So, yeah. so I have a funny question. Yeah. Uh, lateral G's. <laughs> Has any any special person ever uh, flipped well, it? Well, <laughs> that's um, that's that's a I, that's a good question. Lateral G's. My background's in auto racing, so absolutely, I'm I'm all about that. Um, the great thing about it is the batteries actually lay on either side of the seat, so the center of gravity is really low. You can actually be quite a hoodlum in this car. You can really throw it into a corner and it sticks like glue. So, uh, yeah, lots of fun. It's obviously different with three wheels versus four, but um, yeah, stability is very good and it's lots of fun to drive. Yeah, as you can tell from driving. Yeah, it, so. yeah. Actually, uh, we were able to open it up a little bit. And, Just a little. Uh, yeah. I was playing around with the steering, and it, it does. I mean, like it, it, it's it's peppy. It's only 130. It is kilometers an hour top speed, but uh, you, you move left to right. It's, it's not uh, slow. It's no, it's lots of fun, lots of fun. For a commuter, I mean, uh, people commute, or complain about their commute every day. This is going to make commuting the best part of their day. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you don't stop smiling. The looks no. you get from everybody's insane. <laughs> uh, but let's go inside, because I, I really want to see the facility. Excellent. So we're inside the Canadian factory for the Solo. And, uh, you know, right off the bat, I have to say, I drove the Canadian pre-production yes. version of the Solo. That's correct. This is the mass-produced one. That's right. This is the car that people will be driving. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, take me through it because people are taking delivery in the U.S. Right. Uh, specifically, a lot looks different. I mean, it's still the single-seater, but, I mean, the, 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 the components and the features, I mean, the lights, totally different, what's that about? Well, um, a couple things. Firstly, the center headlight, which is something that uh, we had to add to the car. In some of the jurisdictions, the car classifies as a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. So 
Because of that, we have to have a light in the center. So they actually came up with a great idea. It does both a high and a low beam. We then also put an LED lights in the bottom corner. And this car now has air conditioning, power steering, and power brakes, which you would have noticed when you drove the other car that didn't have those. So First thing I noticed. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> the biggest change as well, too, the interior is really, really nice in this car. Uh, the car, just the overall build quality is so impressive. Everything is just, uh, you know, the doors close just perfectly. It's, um, it's, it's a big step forward. So this, as you said, is a mass-produced car. Mm -hmm. uh, the plans are to build 5,000 of these cars for the U.S. market for this year. Okay. Nice. Uh, the doors as well both open on each side, correct? They do, yeah. And that's uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, we built the car as a world car, so we'll be able to sell the car in Japan or Australia or England. Mm -hmm. We don't have to change the steering wheel, obviously. Uh, so you'll be able to open either door. As well, from a safety standpoint, as you can imagine, too, if for whatever reason you weren't able to get out one door, you have another door to get out of. So. Okay. Um, as we move around the side, just uh, one last thing. You mentioned in, in the U.S., yes. the Solo is actually classified as a motorcycle, but yes. here a car? Correct. Um, there's Jury. different jurisdictions. Uh, in the U.S., if the vehicle has less than four wheels, it's considered a motorcycle okay. or an auto cycle. Again, some states are a little bit different, but uh, but the main thing was is that we had a requirement to put a headlight into the center of the car, so uh, it looks really cool the way they've done it, sort of glassed in and stuff like that. So we're pretty happy with that. Yeah. And what are the what are the uh, different models like? Well, right now we really keep it simple. Yeah. Uh, basically, the car comes one way. Uh, really, the only options will be colors. So you have a choice of okay. you know red, silver, black, or white. Uh, I find the red ones are the fastest ones, if you're wondering, so, uh, but, uh, but yeah, we're just keeping it simple, but at the same time, you know, we know that a car called a Solo really lends itself to individuality, so we really expect that people probably are going to be wanting to, you know, to do wraps on them or to do, um, uh, you know, different interior features or something like that, so I'm sure that'll come further on down the road, but at the moment, yeah, we just keep it nice and simple, just the four colors. Yeah, and what about safety? What are you yeah. doing to, to comply with the standards? Incredibly safe car. Uh, one of the things we did, um, well, just recently, one of the tests we did was a side crush test. Uh, roughly 3,000 pounds is where a car needs to be uh, to pass this test. We actually scored 20,000 pounds, so very, very safe car. Uh, underneath the, the panels, basically, is a uh, honeycomb aluminum. Mm -hmm. So gone is the days where you build cars out of pressed steel, which is just really not the thing to make a car out of. Um, so uh, by using aerospace technology, uh, the car is incredibly strong. Imagine it like a helmet, basically. The yeah. car is designed as a, to be like a helmet. So, yeah, very safe little car. Okay. How long is this process? Like, uh, this when is, you um, get one, yeah. one chassis, what's, uh, what's it about? Like, well, does it take a day? Does it take a week? Oh, it takes uh, about a month to build wow, four a month. cars. A month. So, it's, uh, as you can see, they're all hand-built. There's uh, really no automation here in the plants at all. This is uh, old world craftsmanship. This is how they used to build cars. So, uh, But it is really the heart and soul of, of the company. And this is the product that we designed right here. Uh, and so it's kind of interesting to see how the cars become a hand-built car like this and then turn into a mass-produced car uh, yeah. from our plant in China. So what's the first process when you, when you get the chassis, the first, right? process, the first process, we can head down here a little bit. Okay. You can see... So this is car number 50. So this is the 50th car. This guy here has uh, just been freshly painted. So essentially what we start with is this aerospace composite. So when you're flying in an airplane on a 767 and you're walking down the aisle looking for your seat, that's what you're walking on. You're walking on the same wow. stuff. So really, really light and exceptionally strong. This goes back to your question about safety. Um, one aspect about the safety as well too, which I should have mentioned, is the batteries actually live on either side of the driver's seat. So that actually offers a lot of structural support for uh, side impacts and things like that. So super strong car. We call it a tub, just like you call it in a, in a, in a racing car. We call it a, a tub, same thing. Okay, and next so, step back Yeah, and as we go down the line here a little bit, you can see that um, we start putting some of the wiring limbs in. The batteries, you can see you're sitting on either side here of, this, uh, of these runners. And the idea is that as battery technology gets better, we'll actually be able to slide these out and actually put in newer, better, lighter batteries with 
with longer range. It's a race for space right now for stuff like that. So that's uh, how we've kind of designed it. How often are you changing out batteries or, or really well, upgrading them? Well, the batteries, um, the batteries we, we're putting a five-year warranty on it, but we think that the battery itself, the technology is coming so much quicker that there's a good possibility that people will actually just want to upgrade to a, you know, to a better battery as that technology comes available. So that's really why we designed it that way, so that you can uh, r remove those batteries when you need to. Yeah. What, what's next? What's <laughs> next for the company? Well, um, we love cars, and uh, what we find is that you know, cars today have gotten kind of boring. You know, they're, um, they use gas, they're expensive, they're uh, expensive to maintain as well. And so we want to come out with a car, a sports car, oh. that's a two-seat open-top car called Tofino. It's named after a, a little town on Vancouver Island, which if you haven't been there, you should go because yeah. it's beautiful. There's ocean waves. And so we want to kind of capture what that feels like to be in an oceanside uh, village. And so all of those things, our engineers go there and actually get a feel for the for the location. So all of that actually goes into the designing of the new car. So we're really excited to be able to, uh, at some point, once we get all of the, the solos going, and then, then yeah. certainly this is where this is going, uh, to be able to start rolling out with the Tofino, which is just super exciting. I mean, imagine an electric, open top, convertible sports car, completely silent, no gasoline, no oil changes, and really being out in the environment, which is what driving a sports car is all about. So that's yeah. we, we can't wait to have that. So. Yeah, and I think that's just essentially where the industry is going as it well. It is. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much for having me. You're very me. welcome. It's been great. Uh, anytime. Thank you. I, I loved the solo. I loved my, my first time, my first experience. If people want to find the uh, solo online, yep. how do they find it? Absolutely. They can go to electromechanica.com. Uh, our website is there. Um, they can always shoot me an email as well. My name is Jeremy Testar. And so, yeah, by all means, uh, we love to talk to people. We love to talk about cars. So, yeah, absolutely. Okay. And make sure you guys check on the description below. I'll have all the links to the solo and how to find Jeremy. Thank you.